Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Mary, and today's video is going to be the reread, rewrite, or burn tag. <laughs> So I've seen a lot of people do this. Um, most recently I saw Bookish Gems do this and she's the reason I'm doing this. <laughs> I commented on her version of this and she said that I should do it, so I'm gonna do it now. I know Jan Agaton does this for her monthly wrap-ups every month, so she also does that. She's the original person I saw do this tag, but I'm gonna try to find the original creator and link them down below if I can remember to do that. We all know I'm really bad at remembering to put things in the description box that I say will be there. So. I am just going to use the 115 books that I've read so far this year. I'm going to try to do five rounds of three books each, so it's 15 books. And let's just see what the first books are. So first, we have Hot and Badgered by Shelley Lawrenston, Flawless by Sarah Shepard, and Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. So for this book, or for this round, I think, I don't remember which of the Pretty Little Liars books Flawless is, so I'm gonna look that up really quick because that definitely will change what I do, or it might change what I do. It's the second book in the Pretty Little Liar series. So, what I think I would do for this one, <laughs> unfortunately, I did read all of the Pretty Little Liars books for a vlog earlier this year, or for two vlogs, I had to split it into two, but I will link those so you can watch them if you're interested. But I think I would burn Flawless by Sarah Shepard just because that's not one of the ones that I would have rewritten to make the plot different. I think I would reread. Well, hold on. I actually think I might burn Hot and Badgered by Shelley Lawrenson. It's a shape-shifting romance. I didn't love that book. I didn't really care that much about it, but I don't think I would reread it. Um, and I definitely would rewrite Home Before Dark by Riley Sager, which I think is going to be a controversial opinion, just because I don't know exactly what I would change in that book, but there are definitely things about certain reveals that I wish had gone differently, because when I read that book, I expected so many things because I've heard so many amazing things about that book. So many people have told me that's their favorite Riley Sager and I liked it. I gave it four stars, but I didn't think it was anything like phenomenal compared to other things that I've read in the thriller, mystery thriller genre. And especially in the like, is the house haunted or is it not haunted genre. So I think I would change a few tonal things and I think I would do some switching for like reveals, if that makes sense. So I guess I would reread Flawless by Sarah Shepard, which I'm not mad about because I didn't love those books. Like objectively, they're not the best books ever written, but they are a really fun series. So I'm gonna be skipping any other Sarah Shepherds that I get because I did, I mean, there's 16 books. Round two, we have The Toll by Neil Schusterman, All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr, and Beautiful World, Where Are You by Sally Rooney. Okay, so for this one, let me check what book The Toll is. It's definitely, I think it's the last book. In, yeah, it's the last book in the Ark of the Scythe series. And for that reason, I think I would burn it just because I think that, mm, I, I've spoken too soon. Hold on, let me look at my other ones. <sighs> All the Light We Cannot See, which is a book that I felt neither here nor there about. And if you, I'm gonna reread Beautiful World, Where Are You? I really enjoyed that book. I don't think there's anything that I would really change about it necessarily. Um, but it is a book that I really enjoyed. I really like Sally Rooney's writing style and that book really worked for me. I liked the, the themes that it explored, I guess. Um, so I would reread that one. I think I'm going to rewrite The Toll. I know I said I was going to burn it a second ago. I think I'm going to rewrite it just because the way that the series built up, the second book was so good in my opinion. It was the best book of the series by far because it expanded the worldview a little bit and it got out of some of the typical dystopian tropes that the first book has, which there's nothing wrong with those tropes. I just don't, I, th I thought the second book did more unique things. And I also liked the direction the third, the second book was going. And I liked parts of the third book. I just felt like the way it wrapped up, it almost wrapped up too soon, but it also felt like it took too long to get there, if that makes sense. So I feel like all of the things that Neil Schusterman wanted to do, he probably could have done in a fourth book and had more build up in the third book, if that makes sense. Because I, I can see the arcs that he was going for, but I just felt like there was too much in that third book. So if I rewrote it, I would either rewrite it to be a third and then fourth book, or I would cut some stuff out and just reorganize the way that things were to give it a better flow and to make it easier to follow for the reader, if that makes sense. If you've read it, I hope that makes sense. I don't want to spoil anything, obviously, for those of you who have not read that book, which means I would be burning all the, all the light we cannot see. Uh, which is fine with me because I didn't really care about that book. So let's move on. Round three, we have The Kingdom of Back by Marie Lu, Shadows for Silence in the Forests of Hell by Brandon Sanderson, and Words of Radiance by Brandon Sanderson. This 
is hard <laughs> because I don't think I could rewrite anything better than what Brandon Sanderson has done. So my original thought when I got Shadows of Silence, for, Shadows of Silence, Shadows for Silence in the, what is it called? Shadows for Silence in the Forests of Hell. Just because I loved that book, Silence is one of my favorite Brandon Sanderson characters ever written. That being said, um, the Stormlight Archives has Kaladin, which is my other favorite Brandon Sanderson character. <sighs> And Words of Radiance is the second Stormlight Archive, which I liked more than the first, even though they were both five-star reads for me. So this is actually really hard. Um, and I've already forgotten. Oh, Kingdom of Back. I guess I would burn Kingdom of Back because I don't feel as strongly about it as I do about the other two. But I still liked that book. There's nothing wrong with that book. I really enjoyed it. It's a historical fantasy, uh, basically following the real lives of Mozart and his sister, primarily his sister. And then... It also delves into their like imaginary world that they find. I, again, like that book, didn't love it. I don't love music in books. There's a lot of music in that book. <laughs> I've talked about that before. I just, something about it doesn't work for me. So that's why I would burn that one. Um, also, because I love the other two so much. Uh, this is hard. I guess I would reread Shadows for Silence and I would have to do some revisions of the storm. Oh God. Oh my God. <laughs> I would have to do some revisions of Words of Radiance, but I don't know what, because I haven't finished that series yet. I don't know what I would change. But it's, I mean, it's a 1200 page book. I could find something to change probably. So um, <laughs> that's what I would do. God, that was a really hard one. Two more. The first book in round four is Orphan Train by Christina Baker Klein, which is a historical fiction book. Once more, we saw Stars by Jason Green, who, which is a memoir about grief and death of a child. And then we have Autopsy of a Crime Lab by Brandon L. Garrett, which is another nonfiction book. Okay, so right off the bat, I'm gonna rewrite Autopsy of a Crime Lab because I remember while I was reading this, there were sections that were so heavily focused on, like this is a book about forensic evidence being used in courtrooms. Basically, I read it for one of my classes, but I also read it for fun. We listened to a podcast for the class that was what was assigned with the author. Um, so that's why, <laughs> that's why I read the book is because I wanted to read the book before we read the podcast. I was going to discuss the book with the author, if that makes sense. Um, so I would alter the amount of time he spent on certain forensic processes, processes, and give more, either give more of a blanket view or make the book just about fingerprinting. Because as it stood, it was like mostly about fingerprinting, like 85%. And then he talked about a few other things here and there. And it, I just felt like it could have been more compelling if it used more real world examples. He did use some real world examples. And then also if he divvied up better the sections and had more even time spent on everything. So that's that's the one I would uh, re rewrite. I guess I would reread Orphan Train just because I would have to burn the Jason Green book. I'm not rereading that. It was so good, so sad. Um, so that's a book I would burn because obviously I can't rewrite it because it's his memoir, but obviously I don't want to reread it because it was like horrifically sad. I do highly recommend that. I think it does a really good job of delving into the topic of grief and specifically loss of a child. That's not a thing that I have gone through personally, but I thought he did a really good job of like fleshing out all of the feelings that he had and also the difficulty of um, like blame in that situation. So I thought that was a really interesting thing to read about, but I'm not reading it again. So I would burn that one and I would reread Orphan Train. Last round. Okay, number one is In My Dreams I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead. Two is I'm Not Dying With You Tonight by Kimberly Jones and Gilly or Jilly Siegel or Seagal. I never learned how to pronounce her last name or her first name. So apologies for that. And finally, Sing To It Stories by Amy Hempel. This is another pretty hard one, I think. Okay, so I'm definitely gonna... Mm? My dog just came in. What are you doing, Murph? Can you sit? Sit. Thank you. I'm almost finished, okay? Sorry if you can hear him walking around. That is what he's doing. I think he's leaving the room because I'm not giving him enough attention. So. Oh no, he's back. Gosh, this is a hard one too. Just because... All of these books are so different. So I think I would reread Sing To It by Amy Hempel because that is my favorite of these three. That's the one I get five stars. Um, I think I would burn I'm Not Dying With You Tonight 
just because I didn't care about it and I think there are books that do that topic better and also I don't think I could rewrite it because I would only be one of the perspectives and the whole point of the book is that you have the perspective of a white woman and the perspective of a black woman obviously writing from the perspective of teenagers of varying races but you get the point and I think I would rewrite In My Dreams I Hold a Knife and I don't really know what I would change about this one either but this is another thriller that everyone seems to love and I thought was good but also not that great. What I did like about this book is that I thought it was a great version of whodunits because it kept giving you like reasons why someone might have committed this murder. It's a 10 year college reunion for people and when they were in college one of their friends was murdered and they don't know who did it. Um, they think they know who did it but it turns out that it's not the person who did it and so they're trying to figure out who amongst them murdered her and they all came back for a college reunion and so now they're stuck together and they have to figure out who did this murder and they keep revealing different parts of the night that they didn't know before and secrets that they had that they never told people about before which is really interesting. I don't know exactly what I would rewrite about this off the top of my head but I do know that I didn't it didn't like fully grip me the way that I it gripped so many people and so I think I would change I would have to change something about it. I don't know I <laughs> talked such a big game on Bookish Gems video of this because I was she was saying she was she didn't know it because she did it with all her five star reads and she was like I don't know what I would change about any of these books and I was thinking I was like I feel like I had things that I would change about almost any book that I read even if I absolutely love it but now I'm realizing at least the books that have been chosen here I don't know what I would change about them I do know what I would change about I'm not dying with you tonight does that mean I should burn in my dreams I hold a knife and rewrite I'm not dying with you tonight to have it make more sense and also put a map at the beginning of the book so you can follow where the girls are going. I don't know. I don't think I would want to do that though. I think I would want to rewrite In My Dreams I Hold a Knife. I just don't know how I would rewrite it. So I would just have to, I would have to change it to make it darker, I think. I think if it had been a little darker than it was, because I think it was supposed to be really dark, but I didn't find it that dark. And again, I think this is an atmosphere thing, kind of like I was saying with the Rayleigh Sager book, what is it, Home Before Dark? I think if it was a little darker, this book, I think I, I would have liked it a little more. But that is my reread, rewrite, or burn tag. Let me know in the comments down below if you have done this tag before. Also let me know if you agree or disagree with my choices. Um, thank you so much again for watching this video. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. If you want to see more content from me, I am currently vlogging every week of Bookoplathon, which is really fun. Um, and I do try to post two videos every single week. The jury is still out on whether this video will go up when it is supposed to go up because it is supposed to go up today, but I have my engagement photo shoot in like an hour. So we'll see if that happens. But um, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you want to, like the video if you liked it, and I'll see you in my next one.